Hey guys, Ryan here for Bender Wins, and today I am going to talk about a stock that I like. Before we jump into that, guys, this is not professional advice, okay? I am a sports better. I am not an investment banker or a stockbroker, but I'm gonna walk you through this and talk a little bit about why I like this particular stock. The stock I'm gonna be talking about today, guys, ticker symbol CNTY, Century Casinos. I'm gonna talk to you guys about why I think this is a good buy. I'm gonna talk about the amount of time we're gonna hold this for, and go through everything there is to talk about the company. Now in the past, I have recommended a few other stocks to you guys. Number one being DraftKings. It was the first stock I ever came out and gave you guys. It was very early on in sports betting and DraftKings was sitting at $16 a share. From that point, it went down to $13 a share and now it is sitting at $47.50. So a pretty great return. Next was Bitcoin. Last year guys, when Bitcoin was at the absolute near bottom, I'll say, um, I came out and I said, look, this is an excellent buying opportunity. Okay? Be buying when everyone else is selling and sell when everyone else is buying. And I follow along with the Bitcoin rainbow, the RSI, it's a relative strength index, and Bitcoin had never dipped below that. So if it was going to continue down below 18,000, it was going to have to go below that Bitcoin rainbow, which it has never gone through. Well, it did continue down slightly to 16,000, and now happy to say that today, 70,000. Now last month, guys, I gave out MSGS in my masterclass. Um, this is more of a long-term value play. Um, and the, the, the stock that I have today, guys, um, higher on the risk profile. I would put this up there in terms of risk profile, uh, close with DraftKings early on, um, potentially even a little bit higher. So there's a lot of upside potential in this stock, but there are some risks involved as well. So I wanna walk you through this stock top to bottom, guys, tell you why I like this one so much. Okay, so starting off, guys, uh, timeline, we're looking at potentially um, a three to five year investment. Could be a little less, could be a little more, but the upside potential is very, very significant. Talking about four to five X its current valuation. Now, when I drew this up, the stock was sitting at $2.68. It had a nice little rally today. I think it's sitting at like two eighty five dollars now. Absolutely 100%. This is a buy right up to the point of $4, and I'm gonna tell you guys why. Okay, so um, first and foremost, guys, I wanna walk you through this. Again, the timeline here, uh, four to five years, we're looking, or sorry, four to five X upside potential and three to five year investment term, okay? Now, our upside here very, very much outweighs our downside potential, okay? So this is a stock that I'm willing to hang on to on the downside all the way down to about 50 or 60 cents. I think if it falls down to the 50 or 60 cent range, we are talking about a company that is in serious, serious trouble. And at that point, pull the plug and out we go. So we're ultimately looking at a downside potential of around $2 a share. Where if we're looking at our upside potential, four or five X, we're talking about an upside of making $7 or $15. Now, we talk about this in sports betting all the time, okay? We are trying to identify value. And if we have an opportunity on a stock like this, where I really think there's a better than 50% chance that we see this kind of upside potential versus a much lower chance that we're seeing this company continue to fall to the points where it's nearing bankruptcy, they have very strong cash positions. And I'm gonna talk about that in a second. But our upside potential is significant and our downside potential is limited to about $2 a share. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about this stock in particular. So one of the things that jumps out at you about this stock is it has uh, an enterprise value of $950 million, but a market cap of only 91 million. Now, basically an enterprise value is all the assets, everything they own, all added up. And market or market cap is if you took all the publicly traded stocks on the market and multiply that by what it's trading at, this is basically, if you bought all the stocks at today's price, this is what you would be able to buy the entire company for, okay? Now there's a massive difference between here. Why is it they have 950 million, almost a billion dollars in assets and casinos and cash and all this, but it's only trading for $91 million? There's a reason for it. I'll get through that in a quick second. One of the things to look at here, guys, is the PEG ratio, okay? Now this is important to understand where stocks are overbought, or oversold, and it is a good illustration of potential long-term value, okay? The PEG number is calculated off of a five-year expected growth rate. Anything under one is considered undervalued, okay? In this particular case, 
I strongly agree with that. And I actually think that this number doesn't even accurately, accurately reflect how undervalued this stock is. Now their current cash position is strong. And that's important here because I'm gonna talk in a minute about some of the expenses and some of the weight that's pulling this company down right now. But they're sitting on $171 million of cash in a very, very strong cash position, okay? Their book value per share, and this is one of the things that gets me very excited, the book value per share. This is basically the breakup value, okay? If I bought every single share of this company, couldn't do it, but if I did, if I bought every share of this company tomorrow, and I paid off all the debt, I took care of all the other stuff, I took all the cash and I sold off their assets, it'd be worth $4 a share. Now you can see right away, there is takeover value here. If a larger casino wanted to come in, buy them out, there's value, okay? It's trading, we'll call it 285 now, it's trading at 285, but it's worth $4 a share. Now the reason it's trading at a little bit of a discount is because they have some debt, but it's manageable. I'm gonna talk about that in a quick second. This is a very, very high growth company. They've managed to grow their revenue from $300 million back in 2020 to $550 million in 2023. And we're expected to see another major increase in 2024. And this has to do with the rapid expansion of new casinos. They're building a massive new casino in Reno. They've acquired a bunch of other casinos. They've done deals in Alberta for casinos and tracks. So just to walk you guys through, Right now, they own 11 casinos in North America, five or six in Poland. They got the new one coming in Reno. Fantastic management team with an excellent background in, uh, in casinos, okay? Um, the key investors, a lot of insiders holding this, okay? A lot of management holding it, and BlackRock holds this, okay? I love seeing BlackRock on it because these guys don't make bad bets. BlackRock know what to do, okay? So we're looking at significant revenue increases year in year out. Um, but here's the number that is concerning, okay? In 2023, they took a $23 million loss. Now you might say, well, that's a pretty big loss, right? But $93 million of that was interest. That was a $93 million expense. Without their interest expense, they're very, very profitable, okay? Now they're currently holding a debt of just over a billion dollars. But keep in mind, this is a very manageable debt, okay? They have the cash. They have the ability with very good cash flow to make these debt payments, okay? Now, one of their current loans, which is through Goldman Sachs, is a high interest rate loan. They are paying 11% interest, and that is leading to a loss. Now, as they complete projects, and they're finished being built, they are going to be able to refinance these products at a hell of a lot better rate. And then the cash starts coming into the company and they use that cash to pay down this debt. And all of a sudden this number of 23 million goes from being a $23 million loss to potentially hundred plus million dollar profit when you factor in the new revenue and you factor in the fact they're gonna have lower debt rates and they're gonna pay that debt down. So at the end of the day, guys, this is a risky play, okay? We have a billion dollars in debt. We have a market capitalization of only 91 million when the whole enterprise value is worth 950 million. But the fact that the enterprise is worth 950 million gives them the leverage to be able to generate huge, uh, huge amounts of cash flow. It gives them leverage with the banks to be able to refinance, to get additional lending where they want it. And to be perfectly honest, I completely and totally agree with this management team's philosophy of growing while you can grow this up, build the revenue, then the profits come. Now, the only headwind that they face is because obviously when they were signing some of these projects, they didn't expect to see the interest rates climb to the point where they've climbed, thus facing an 11% loan for hundreds of millions of dollars, okay? Overall, a billion dollars in debt, it is a huge, massive chunk of their yearly expenses. But again, as we see interest rates decline, that number comes down. As we see more revenue coming in, they're paying that down, it comes down, and when they finish projects, like they are going to in Reno, they can refinance that because it is a brick and mortar building, they will get better rates, and they will make money, guys. Like sports betting, bank home management, invest responsibly, guys. I think we have a winner here. Huge upside potential on this one, and very limited downside. I wish you guys the best of luck, and we'll see you soon.